Ribosome footprinting, also known as ribosome profiling or riboseq, is a relatively new scientific method that allows researchers to get a more accurate picture of what is going on in a particular organism at a given point in time. More specifically, it gives a picture of which particular proteins are being produced as a result of the genetic instructions located within a cell. This could be important for a variety of reasons, but we will give one example here. If an employee of a drug company is working on the development of a new drug for the treatment of a disease, he or she needs all the information available to help develop an effective treatment. Knowing which proteins a model organism is producing in response to an exposure to this drug would be extremely helpful in targeting the activity of the new drug and anticipating potential side effects. To understand ribosome footprinting, a brief review of basic genetics is in order. The instructions for the development, growth, and maintenance of a living organism are found in its cells. These instructions are encoded by genes, which are made of molecules known as DNA. DNA is a series of smaller units called nucleotides, identified as A, C, G, or T. It is the arrangement of hundreds or even thousands of these units in specific sequences that form a code that is then converted to messenger RNA through a process called transcription. The sequence information encoded in the messenger RNA can then be used to synthesize proteins in a process called translation. Proteins are responsible for directing and carrying out most of the functions that are necessary for everyday life. It is the process of translating messenger RNA into protein to which we want to direct our focus. Messenger RNA is in the form of long sequences of code to which ribosomes are attached. Ribosomes are molecular machines that travel down the strand of messenger RNA and read the sequence encoded there. As they read the message, they use the code in the messenger RNA to string together other molecules, amino acids or the building blocks of protein, in particular order. This brings us to ribosome footprinting. If we know exactly which messenger RNA has ribosomes attached and how many, we then know which proteins are being produced and to what degree. We can determine this experimentally by treating the contents of a cell with a chemical called cyclohexamide that freezes the ribosomes in place on the messenger RNA. Once this is done, we separate out the messenger RNA with the attached ribosomes from the other contents of the cell by putting them in a thick sucrose solution and spinning them in a centrifuge at a very high rate of speed. This is where the really interesting part comes in. Messenger RNA is very unstable because it can be easily degraded by special enzymes called nucleases. Nucleases chew up unprotected strands of messenger RNA. This leaves only the portions of the messenger RNA that are protected by the ribosomes from which we get the term ribosome footprint. If we identify the protected messenger RNA segments, then it follows that we should be able to identify which proteins were being actively translated. We still have a little more work to do. Now we subject the segments of messenger RNA that we have to RNA sequencing, which is a relatively new, sophisticated process that in this case will give us the sequence of all of the messenger RNA footprints that we have. At the same time, we run a parallel RNA sequence of the total messenger RNA of our organism so that we can compare with our ribosome footprint. We use deep sequencing, which means that we run in parallel millions of sequencing reactions to generate a very detailed profile of our material. In the end, the percentage of footprint segments for a particular messenger RNA compared with the total abundance of such messenger RNA will give us a good indication of the amounts and types of proteins our model organism might produce. And because of this, our drug researcher now has much more information to work with, which makes everyone happier and healthier in the end.